RS Group provided me with a mountain of parts from their RS Pro range. That bundle of products is in fact a kit for a special gadget. My job was to use the raw materials to build a system that converts solar energy into electrical energy, stores that energy and releases it when needed. All electronic components are housed in the cuboid frame, well protected from unauthorized access. The solar cells mounted on the outside can be folded down for transport. My job was to recreate a prototype that was built by RS for an exhibition and to provide detailed feedback from the build process. Since everything is made up of individual components from the RS Pro product range, the system is an open source solar generator and that is entirely in the spirit of how open is this gadget, which is why I was happy to accept that special job offer. The open source philosophy was deliberately chosen by RS, with a lead jail battery as energy storage and charger with a pulse width modulation, the solar generator is not designed as a top product for end users, but as a learning object for training centers. With a storage capacity of 1.4kWh in a robust battery, the solar box is also an interesting project for ambitious hobbyists. In this video I'll show the key points of the assembly, the details of which can be found in the richly illustrated instructions that were created during my assembly and are available for download on the RS website. All parts of the frame must be cut from the raw material. First, the aluminum profiles must be cut to length. If you want to do this in the classic way with a vise and a handsaw, a small, maybe old metal angle with cardboard glued on the inside will help to make the cuts straight. The angle may be rusty, but it must still be right angled. When marking the aluminum bar with the cutter, use the back of the blade so that you can still use it to cut something afterwards. When sewing the aluminum profile, the angle also helps to make the cuts straight and at right angles. And yes, the wobbly table in my video studio is definitely not a good workbench. A new, sharp saw blade saves a little time when sawing. If you don't want to strain your muscles or simply want to reach your goal faster, you can use an electrically powered saw. A saw blade for aluminum must be used, wood saw blades are unsuitable. The aluminum saw blades are usually designed for a lower speed, so a chop saw with some sort of speed regulation ensures a longer service life of this cutting tool. With the power tool, a cut is done in a fraction of the time and the resulting edge is smoother. 32 cuts through the 40x40mm extruded aluminum must be made for the frame construction. The sharp cut edges should be smoothened with a file or sandpaper. The structural aluminum system can be assembled in different ways. M8 screws with self-tapping threads are used to attach to the central hole of the cut edges. And as always with thread cutting, the same applies here, a drop of oil makes your life easier. Of course, it's even easier to make the thread with a tap designed for this purpose. This saves you a lot of muscle strength and calluses on your hands, as the screws generate an enormous amount of friction when screwing in without pre-cutting the threads. The thread only needs to be cut about 10mm deep. The self-tapping screw then does the rest without any problems.
Cube shaped connectors are used at the cutting edges to connect struts to one another. Special nuts can be inserted from the front or laterally into the 8mm wide grooves, meaning that screw connections can be made at any position along the profile with no need for drilling. These special nuts are available for the 40x40mm profiles as M8 or M6. Brackets from the modular system attached to the long sides via these nuts ensure sturdy right angled screw connections. And there are matching plastic covers for both connectors. Another material that needs to be cut is acrylic plastic, which is used to cover the sides of the frame. Avoid tension or heat when processing acrylic plastic. Cutting with a handsaw is highly recommended, as this tool allows you to do the task with the right amount of tactile feedback. If you work with electric saws, the plastic can melt and the acrylic glass can crack, which doesn't tend to happen so easily when sawing by hand. A bit of water with a few drops of detergent makes sawing easier, as it cools the plastic. With muscles and a bit of sensitivity for the matter, very smooth cuts can be achieved. What I've always wanted to try since I was given an electric tile cutter as a gift, I can do now. And yes, with the water cooling and the diamond coated cutting disc for tiles, 6mm thick acrylic glass can also be cut without the plastic melting or stress cracks occurring. The risk of injury is far lower than with a circular saw or a jigsaw and the resulting cuts are very smooth. When drilling, it is also important to ensure that the material does not crack. Pre-drill with a 2 to 4 mm diameter metal drill. A wood drill is used for the final diameter. This cuts the material from the outer edge inwards, which better prevents the forming of cracks. Cooling with water is highly recommended. The plate is drilled about halfway from one side... ...and then completely pierced from the other side. The flat drill seen here is also well suited for making holes in the plastic panels. Don't apply too much pressure when drilling, otherwise even a wood drill will cause cracks in the plastic. With the flat drill, precise holes with smooth edges can be made. Holes with even larger diameters can be made with a hole saw. It is best to make the central hole with a wood drill as shown before. 
The whole saw then cuts the large diameter. A lot of heat is generated here, which is why you should let the plate and tool cool down from time to time and remove the chips. Here too, only half of one side is drilled. And from the other side the plastic plate is completely cut through. For wiring, 8mm holes must be drilled on 4 aluminum struts. Yes, my drill press already has a few operating hours on the drive belt, but why should I replace a good thing as long as the chuck is rotating? Assembling the frame is a quick task with the profile struts. Photos of all steps are included in the build instructions. This brings us to the wiring. To operate as a solar generator, all you need are solar cells, a storage battery, a charge controller and an inverter, all of which can be switched off using an isolator switch. Everything else is optional and there's plenty of space in the box for additional components that you can install if wanted. The RS unit is equipped with some additional, quite nice but not absolutely necessary components. Since everything should be accessible from the outside, some more switches and sockets are needed. RS has installed, among other things, an LED lighting in white and red, a fan, and a voltmeter. A battery charger ensures that the battery can be charged even at trade fairs without sunlight. The chargers can be disconnected from the battery by large switches. As already mentioned, this solar generator is intended as a demo unit for teaching purposes and it is up to you what else to install. Of course, you can let your imagination run wild as to what should be integrated into the box. The wiring is done with cable cross sections of 1.5 or 6mm squared without any soldered connections, all joints are screwed or clamped. The required tools were included in one of the packages from RS. For the end wire sleeves, the cable must first be stripped of insulation, which can be done with millimeter precision in a matter of seconds using the appropriate tool. For crimping, the sleeve is placed in the pliers and these are pressed together slightly so that the sleeve is held in place. Now insert the cable completely. The cable must be stripped to such an extent that the copper wires are flush with the end of the sleeve. Now the crimping pliers are fully compressed until they finally open again on their own. This creates the correct connection. In addition to the single sleeves, twin sleeves are also required for branches. Here too, both cables must be stripped to such an extent that the copper wires flush with the sleeve when both cables have been fully inserted. After being pressed together, both cables are firmly connected to each other.
another crimping plier is required for the cable lugs. The cable lug is placed in the corresponding notch of the pliers and these are pressed together until the part is held in place. Here the cables are stripped to such an extent that the copper wires just stick out of the sleeve when the cable is fully inserted into the lug. This crimping plier is now also pressed together until it opens again by itself. The cable lugs are squeezed by the pliers in two places. Firstly at the front on the metal sleeve to create the electrically conductive connection and secondly at the back on the plastic casing which serves as kink protection and strain relief. The cables are connected onto two DIN rails with terminal blocks attached. Press in a screwdriver, insert the cable with wire end sleeve, pull out the screwdriver and the connection is complete and can easily be released again. The terminal blocks are also available in classic versions with screw connections. Once everything is installed, the solar generator can be put into operation. The solar cells with a total peak output of 80 watts mathematically requires 18 hours under optimal conditions to charge the 12 volts 120 ampere hour battery full of energy. Under real conditions, it should take 40 hours for the lead battery to be full. The smartphone is definitely charged faster via the USB socket. The generator therefore has more than enough storage capacity so that no sunlight bounces off the solar cells unused. The inverter delivers up to 1 kW of continuous power and, purely theoretically, the battery should be able to provide this power for significantly longer than one hour. The parts for subsequent projects can therefore be sawn and drilled far away from the power grid. The assembly instructions and further information about this open source solar generator can be found on the RS website. On the pages of how open is this gadget, there is also some more information and lots of photos of the device. Have a click! And then I received a second delivery from RS with which I can build another solar generator according to my very own ideas. The result of this can be seen on my second project, Homo Faciens. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.